Hi everyone, this is Alejandro Cremades, and today we're gonna to be talking about the sources of funding for your business. So essentially there's different sources of funding. You're gonna have the ones for businesses where they're a little bit more mature, and then perhaps the ones that are a little bit better or more advantageous for those that are more on the earlier stages and perhaps the early days of building and scaling their business. So with that being said, let's get into it. So the first source of funding is bank loans. I mean, obviously banks, you know, like we know them, they are at the worst numbers of issuing financing to businesses since the 1940s. So for that reason, I think that if you are an early stage business where you don't have any perhaps assets or perhaps things that you can put as collateral, I think it's gonna be very difficult for you to be able to secure any type of financing from a bank and then also the problem that comes with getting a, a source you know, of funding from a bank is that you are going to have to make those repayments, which really takes out from the cash flow of your business. So that's definitely one, but not the one that I would recommend the most. The next source of funding is equity crowdfunding. Now, equity crowdfunding, essentially what it is, is when you are putting your venture up in one of those online platforms, such as, for example, Seed Invest, or maybe Start Engine, or one of those other platforms that are essentially connecting startups with accredited investors. And essentially, you know, like what you're doing there is you're just putting up your materials, you're putting up your business, you're putting a price stack on your business and essentially a price per share that you're giving to the investors that are coming in and making an investment in your business. So essentially this is small investors that are putting small ticket sizes in your business and those type of investments or financing rounds tend to be on the smaller end. The next source is really donation-based crowdfunding or perhaps any type of crowdfunding source that doesn't require a contractual obligation, just like the one that you would find on equity crowdfunding. On donation-based crowdfunding, which is the type that you would find on platforms like Kickstarter or Indiegogo, essentially what you are doing is you are perhaps creating a project, an initiative, and essentially pre-selling your product or giving something in exchange for those people that are contributing something to you. So maybe you are giving them an item uh, of maybe like you're, you're, you're basically giving them a product or, or I don't know, just to put something like that, like a pair of shoes or maybe a book that you're about to sell or maybe uh, something that is tangible, right? So on donation crowdfunding platforms, let's say the tech type of projects, they don't perform very well because essentially what are you going to be giving them a way for their contribution? Uh, early beta, you know, test, you know, to your service. It's not really appealing. So typically on donation based crowdfunding, what performs very well is when you have a tangible product that you can give in exchange, or perhaps that is a cause that is really capturing and inspiring people to essentially contribute. The next source of funding is friends and family. Essentially, maybe you have your cousins, your uncles, your parents, your friends. They also call it the friends, family, and fools. But again, you know, I think that if you don't want your Thanksgiving dinner to be uh, a shareholder get together, a shareholder meeting where they're just going to be grilling you on how is the valuation, how has it been increasing over the last week, I would highly encourage you to avoid taking money from friends and family. And in many cases, if things don't pan out as, as promised or, are ex or as expected, perhaps that relationship can go south. So for that reason, I would highly, highly they not recommend uh, going with the friends and family source of financing. Then you have the angel investors. So essentially the angel investors are not the ones that have on LinkedIn the angel investor title. Those are essentially the ones that are going to waste your time, which are just going to be putting a $5,000 check in your business. Angel investors are those that are essentially either senior executives that have an idea or that have domain expertise on what you're doing, or perhaps 
successful entrepreneurs that just exited their business and that are now investing and using this as a way to pay it forward. Next, you have the angel groups. In essence, angel groups is a way in which those angel investors are coming together and really grouping their investments to really invest in your business. Now, angel groups, they are investing in different ways nowadays. They are either investing via a special purpose vehicle, which is a vehicle like an LLC that they use to group them all and really invest and count as one in your cap table, which is that ledger that really keeps track of who owns what part of the business, essentially who owns what piece of, of the pie or what kind of equity. Uh, then you're going to have this type of investments in the form of, let's say, direct investments where those investors, those angels that are members of that group, just making investments directly. And then lastly, you're, we're starting to see that many angel groups are creating venture capital funds to essentially make investments in those companies that they are excited about. Next, we have the startup accelerator programs. I mean, those are like Y Combinator, Techstars, those are the best. And essentially, you're getting a small amount of money. It typically ranges between 10,000 all the way to 100,000. And basically, what happens is that you're giving them in exchange 5 to 10% of equity in your business, and you're committing to spending three months with them, perhaps, you know, like in the Bay Area or in New York or wherever they are based to essentially having them help you uh, in really scaling things up, in plugging in their networks, in them maybe making introductions to investors, which happens in the form of demo days. Uh, and essentially, that's the way that startup accelerators work. Next, you have the venture capital firms. And venture capital firms, they tend to come in a little bit later, right? Venture capitals, obviously, they invest in people, and they are going to take the risk of really coming in at, a, at the early stage of the business. But essentially, what they want is they want to see that there is a product market fit, basically, that you've been able to kind of like have a product in the market and validate it somehow. Now, venture capital firms, typically, they start to invest bigger amounts. We're looking at 500,000 and up, uh, and basically they would continue to reinvest potentially all the way until your business either goes and does an IPO or until your business is acquired. So here you're talking with sophisticated people, people that are investing for a living, and then also people that have great networks that can really support you to really take it to the next level. The last source of funding is obviously credit cards, but I would highly, highly like not recommend that you do credit cards because essentially what is like the saying, like once you pop, you can't stop. And then it's very hard to backpedal from that. I mean, in many cases, what I see is founders that use credit cards and then essentially they get repaid back from the future investors that come in. But this is super risky and I would not recommend going the credit card route, essentially also because the interests, you know, are very high and probably don't justify going, you know, via this uh, way. So with that being said, hopefully you like this video. I also remember to like, to comment as well, and then to subscribe so that you don't miss on any of the future videos that we're going to be rolling out. And then also don't forget to check the fundraising training, which is the program where we help founders every step of the way from A to C in the fundraising journey. We have live Q&As, uh, templates, agreements, a community of founders all over the world helping each other. And I think that you might find a lot of value from that. So with that being said, thank you so much for watching.